and I believe that we will have a captain's log this week. Yes, we do. Captain's log. Started at 83137.3, February 20th, 2406. We have continued scouting the coreward borders of the Expanse, with the outlying stars being the focus of our mapping efforts. During this time, we have deployed additional remote listening posts to continue to monitor intrusions into the appropriate space. While this ongoing survey is underway, Commander Helsing and the rest of the senior staff have spent time finalizing the Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon Protocol for implementation to the internal security net. I'm eager for this procedure to be tested, to reduce the impact for potential adversaries to have on the internals of the Nighthawk if we were to be boarded again, following events prior to start at 82981.3. And log. And so we are going to start ourselves off on the hollow deck. Where Commander Thashran is oversee is working alongside uh, both. Oh, we don't need uh, skitters anymore. Is working alongside. Uh, I've just had a complete meltdown and lost all names. That's weird of me. Anyways, Commander Helsing, uh, Lieutenant Thish Lieutenant Commander Thashran, are all working with uh, Commander Bashir to ensure that the New protocols are designed and are ready for testing. So if you guys wish to take the scene away, go for it. All right. Um, looks like we have everything settled into the hall. So again, the whole purpose of Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon is when we have either borders coming on, we can direct them by setting up force walls that look like to cover up the intersections, make them look like the natural corridor wall, direct them into the brig, a transporter room, or a hangar bay where we can contain them. And in the case of bringing dignitaries on board, instead of having them walk all over the ship, like happened when we had the ill-fated training exercise with the cornets, we can take them on a guided tour directly into the hollow deck and make it look like the bridge or other installation office anywhere else on the Nighthawk, minimizing their exposure to the rest of the ship. So, and I guess the final thing is we have a kill switch um, between the captain, the XO, and myself that we can kill the whole system in case um, something untowards happens with a rogue AI or a rogue hologram going haywire. So I guess we just need to do a final test. All right. I guess I'll, I'll check over the systems and uh, get ready to you to trigger the test. Are uh, Commander Helsing and uh, sure are you guys ready to go? Ready. Okay. okay. Affirmative. Then on my count, I'm going to trigger a program Green Destiny in uh, three, two, one. And with a poof of the... You find yourselves in the enlisted quarters. Awesome. Do we see any obvious... You know, tells where it's not the enlisted quarter. Uh, roll me insight plus security difficulty of one, please. Insight, one of my worst attributes. <laughs> and. Shipboard tactical, infiltration as a focus? I'll let infiltration work for this. Okay. White hatting. You seem to have... Uh, that is one success. Um, to your trained eye, the simulation seems quite perfect. Nothing abnormal about this. Awesome. Um... The bridge. 
You want the bridge. Okay. Be another good one to look at. You're at the bridge. Uh, you're currently in observer mode, so you guys see yourselves at your posts, having a however bridge banter seems to work <laughs> on the bridge. As you can see, I've programmed everything uh, perfectly once again. Captain Dollar Duck One. Yes, Captain. So, why does the end of Deck 16 look like Captain Crawford's briefing room? That's a good question, Man. does it, sir? Hey. Well, I mean, I was just walking along and I am assuming that you were implementing our security protocols. And I thought the idea was to get them to look like it's this ship and, and not another uh, subspace installation. It was just that section? Just that section. Any ideas? Um, can I do some investigation? Is there an investigation check to um, take a look through the systems and see what the source of the discrepancy is? Um, yeah, that would be a... So roll me a daring plus engineering. And right. Mr. Helsing can assist with daring plus security. A difficulty of two. Uh, anything for focus? Uh, um, shipboard tactical might work, although the Shran's got it already. Yeah, there's one success, so that's one momentum for you guys. Well, there does appear to be some uh, code leakage from the time you guys were um, in the... Ah, last time you guys were at uh, Starbase Cerberus, uh, it appears that the uh, starships, or that the, uh, M yeah. sorry, getting into GMing mode now, I can do this. Uh, it appears that the um, station schematics has somehow gotten muddled into the uh, onboard um, data banks that the uh, holodeck system is pulling. Hmm. Sorry, Captain. Looks like we're oh. having some uh, bleed over from Cerberus. Uh, let me take a look and see if uh, we can fix that up in it. So yeah, I'll, I'll take a look and see if um, I can locate the source of that and see if I can fix it. Uh, you figure out where the files are. It'll take a, another day or so for it to all f for you to properly purge and uh, re-index the data files. But that shouldn't be a problem because you have binars on board to delegate to. Oh yeah, they can do it. Don't worry, Cap don't worry, Captain. My, my minions will, will fix this. <clears throat> your minions? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, my minions, your minions. That's, you know, same thing. Captain, which deck did you say that this uh, incident happened on? Deck 16, Commander. Captain, there's only 13 decks on the Nighthawk. Are you certain? You absolutely positive? What's this? Okay, someone's playing a practical joke on me again, and with changing around these, these plaques and these actual destinations. I'm just reading what was actually the computer display gave me, but there are only thirteen decks, aren't there? Supposed to be. How strange. Unaware of all of this, we are going to cut into the astrometrics lab, where Lieutenant Vaid is working with Ensign Accor. And the binars to uh, calculate some, or to um, catalog some of the uh, f ship's findings of the last few days. It's been pretty bare bones. Um, 
the Lasai Expanse out at the um, unofficial boundaries of the area of space, the system count drops off severely, and the number of stars turns from a dense uh, super, from a dense mega cluster into a smattering of stars. And it's it would be so, a couple uh, about 20 light years or so in between this the edge of the expanse and what would be the next major structure of systems. But still, cataloging needs to be done. Uh, Ensign Ecor uh, slides a data file over to you, um, charting a uh, system that was passed by about three days ago. Lieutenant, could you please analyze these findings? There's something odd within one of the asteroid belts. Absolutely. <laughs> see and this is going to be a uh, run me an insight science or no yeah uh actually reason science please difficulty of zero just because momentum might be needed uh is this sensors uh sensors would work yes <clears throat> two more momentum the ship up at it all or uh not in this instance roger <clears throat> Uh, so the scans are from a probe that was launched uh, three days ago that's just returning its findings. Um, a five-planet solar system, pretty much nondescript. There's no Class M or Class L planets that would typically be uh, pick, typically uh, ah, typically be home to potential life forms. Hmm. Uh, they're... The probes or readings are on the asteroid belt between the second and the third planet. There is, it's mostly unprocessed iron, <clears throat> iron ore, nickel, granite, you know, standard asteroid stuff, except for one block of refined uranium that would, that is roughly 30 meters long by uh, 15 meters wide by 10 meters tall. Fifteen meters wide? Yep, fifteen meters wide. Alright. Oh. What does geranium do? Uh, geranium is most commonly found in ship hull plating. And the dimensions oh, oh. would match a typical uh, Federation shuttlecraft. Oh, wow. And it's refined, so that means it's been dealt with before? Uh, refined means that it's been pro processed, shaped. Processed. Okay. <clears throat> so it looks like we have found some refined geran geranium. It... Yes. <laughs> I guess someone's been working on it. Very curious indeed, Lieutenant. It's my opinion that a second look might be needed there's it's unlikely that a uh, a solid block of geranium in isolation is a naturally occurring phenomenon that is really interesting i would have thought that <laughs> then again i'm not a geologist <laughs> so she shrugs, and that's why you have help within the science department. Yes, thank you very much, because without that, I would not be where I am. I could coordinate another probe, if a more specific probe for you, Lieutenant. Um, I will go ahead and ping the captain and to double check and make sure he wants to go ahead and send out another probe. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, what is this room? Astrometrics. Astrometrics. All right. So astrometrics to Captain Singral. Singral here. Go ahead. <laughs> it looks like uh, the probe we had sent out uh, came back to us, and we have found uh, 
uh, some refined geranium and um, with your permission, um, if you're willing, uh, we were thinking about sending another one to get more um, information on it. Do we require any of the rest of these probes for our additional cartography? Or would these be planetary based? I believe this would be... Would it be planetary based? Uh, no, it's in an asteroid field, so that is quite the opposite of planetary based. So I guess uh, um, it'll be exploring the asteroid field. But by all means, go ahead and send it a probe. All right. Well, uh, Accor, it seems like we've got our permission. Splendid. And with that, she taps a couple buttons, and a probe flies away. It jumps to warp 8, and is gone within seconds. Responses should be back within a couple hours, Lieutenant. Thank you very much. All right, and now we are currently at the freeform portion of the game. Um, does anybody have any specific scenes they'd like to do? Uh, let's start at the top with the captain. <clears throat> Nothing from the captain. Uh, Commander Helsing, um, anything you wish to do? Nope. Okay. Commander Bashir? If uh, he's, uh, he's done with me and his little project, I'm going to go back to the science lab and work on my uh, one of my projects. Okay. Anything in particular? Or is it... Yeah, I'm going to still be doing tests on the crowd. Um, the cryogenic protocols ah, that we've right. taken from the... <laughs> All right. Uh, do me a favor, then, and roll me an insight science, please, with a difficulty of four. Okay. <clears throat> if you have particle physics, that would be perfect. I have temporal physics. Oh, well, that'll work. help if I open my character sheet. Usually <laughs> does. Usually does. <laughs> Whichever one of you has the cat, I demand to see cat pics at the end of the stream. <laughs> Okay, that's two successes. Not a, not a, no new groundbreaking information found yet, but the binars suggest a couple other alternatives for future tests. Nice. Okay. Um, Commander Thashran, anything you're up to? Uh, not particular, other than just making sure the uh, the binars know it's um it's on them to to fix the uh, the little glitch. The binars fully understand and accept their roles as computer caretakers. Uh, Lieutenant Vaid. Um, how many hours have passed? Well, I'm any time between zero and two. Uh, she'll be hanging out in the astrometrics lab waiting on her information. <laughs> All right. Cool. She's okay. laying on a piece of paper. <laughs> okay. Two hours will go past. Uh, Ensign Accor uh, sits upright in her chair as the probe readings come in. Uh, she pops it on the screen. Curious. I was unaware that this was that there were any other ships out here. And what you find is a f what appears to be uh, what the probe displays is a visual picture of a Federation shuttlecraft floating dead in a series of asteroids. And I have the picture here somewhere. Are there any life forms? Yep. So the shuttle looks like this. <clears throat> Too difficult. Uh, the probe isn't reporting any, Lieutenant. Uh, 
Astrometrics Lab to uh, Command. Uh, I'm sorry, Captain <laughs> Sengrawl. I'm busy trying to rearrange the computer, trying to figure out why Deck 13 is giving me Deck 16, <laughs> but... Uh... It turns out that the captain was part of the Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon simulation all along. That took him onto the right. Took him to the wrong deck. It's uh, starting to mess with my worldview a bit, but I'm trying to get that under control while you chime in. <laughs> yes, yes, Lieutenant. I'm very busy right now. Can I help you? It turns out the probe found a shuttlecraft, a Starfleet shuttlecraft, sir. Come again? <laughs> There's a shuttlecraft dead in space, sir. Oh, okay. I thought you meant a Deck 16, which doesn't exist. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and now we have a new meme. Yes. <laughs> I'll be uh, on the bridge. Uh, senior staff, please uh, report to your duty stations. On deck 16. Not 16 deck. Ford is, <laughs> 16 Ford is a new lounge name. Mm. What have I done? There you go. We here? officially changed the lounge to deck 16. <laughs> uh, uh. I claim 14 to 15. <laughs> okay. Um... Bashir, or not Bashir, uh, Thashran, do you wish to be in engineering or on the bridge? Uh, I'll be in engineering for now until I hear otherwise. Okay. Okay. And just like that, Captain, everyone has reported to duty stations. So, can we ID the shuttle? Um, if someone wants to roll, this is going to be a uh, insight plus con check, and the ship can assist with computers plus con, and this will be a difficulty of two. Yeah, I'll, want... I'll go ahead and uh, probably grab Jefferson okay. and have him make that check. The ship does not assist. Insight plus con, correct? Insight con, yep. And if you have starship identification or anything like that, that would be a good focus. You do have a small craft as a focus. Would we be able to use that to identify it? Uh, or just, just... Would you use uh, that as just piloting? Because it's a Federation ship, I will allow it. Okay, then. <clears throat> uh, Jeff... Um, <laughs> as not. far as the computers are able to tell you that the sh the shuttle appears to match with a common sublight uh, surface to orbit shuttle that was popular in the late 2200s but that's about it can we get a tractor beam well, on the shuttle uh, considering that the shuttle is roughly um, an hour away at warp 9? No. Uh, fair enough. If we add more power to the tractor beam. I don't think it's going to. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I think that's a pretty close net thing. <laughs> I mean, if you want me to tinker with the tractor beam, I can. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I can come with something. Uh, you know, it just... Just expect it to uh, take a while to go back to the original. Suck in, suck in everything from there. To... <laughs> <laughs> Jefferson spins in his chair. Orders, Captain? Has the security uh, grid that we've been trying to set up, has that been penetrated recently? Uh, Bashir or Vea, you would know that there's been no penetration on the security net in this neck of the woods. Not in this area, sir. Well, I guess it's time for us to go investigate. Certainly another mystery on our hands. Set, continue to uh, set course for the ship and go engage. Okay. 
All right, it'll be about an hour trip at warp eight. Does anybody have anything they'd like to do? Um, Helsing will kind of just start turning on different sections through the hallways. Okay. Uh, for <laughs> and, and, and testing those out down the hallway, making sure that using a little uh, pad, turning things on and off, checking them. Fair enough. I'm gonna start doodling ideas for changing the tractor beam, just in case. A good idea. Okay, you guys are able. All right, uh, the war, the travel time proceeds fairly quickly. You head back to a system that passed by, or that passed notice, some about two or three days ago. It is a five planetoid system. Uh, it is a yellow giant or a yellow sun in the center, which is similar to our sun. Uh, there's a uh, Mercury uh, style planet orbiting in close. Then there's a class N planet, uh, otherwise a Venus type planet. Uh, there is a gas giant, uh, class J, Jupiter class. And then uh, two uh, Uranus. Uh, two smaller gas giants similar to Uranus. Uh, between the uh, Mercury planet, or sorry, between the Venus planet and the Jupiter is an asteroid belt. Following the uh, probe signal, uh, the Nighthawk makes its way to the outer edge of the asteroid system, and your sensors will pick up the shuttle. Now that we're in closer range, could we uh, make another check to properly ID the shuttle? Absolutely. Uh, sensors plus science would be a good one to uh, get as much information as possible from the sh shuttle. Uh, this will be a difficulty of one, and the ship, of course, can assist with sensor science. Okay. What attribute in science? Uh, insight science, please. Insight science. Yeah. Sorry, I may have told you to roll sensor science, which you don't have. <laughs> I heard it and I was like, what? But I can use sensors as a focus, right? Yes, you can. <clears throat> okay, that's two more momentum. Um, given the fact we've had a scene change, you lose one momentum, so... <laughs> sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. I'm the GM. I shouldn't be sorry. <clears throat> and just as a reminder, as the... Uh, Chief Science Officer role, you do get one free question if you have anything else you wish to ask me after I'm done explaining. Uh, so, what you find is indeed a small uh, sublight shuttlecraft. It is uh, very common in the late 2200s, aka the movie era. So, start between Star Trek 2 and Star Trek 6 is when these things were seen, I think. Um, it does appear to be have been out here some time. It has absolutely zero power left. Uh, there are dents and scrapes along the side indicating several collisions with passing rocks. Uh, there are no life signs aboard. Uh, there's also no organic matter aboard. Um, there is a... Uh, what is odd is that there appears to be something... Or Instead of like a um, ship registry or uh, markings indicating its mothership, someone has spray painted USS Veritas on the hull. So, unless anybody else has any other objections, let's uh, see if we can run that name through the Federation database to see if it rings a bell. Any suggestions on that free question? Um, yeah. Yeah, the ship, ship it came from. <laughs> um, the... probably... Sorry, I'm not. Uh, no one, no one wishes to ask uh, the question or a question. See if we can find out information about the ver the Verity? The Veritas. 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 
that is going to be a separate check. Um, so maybe this could be a Helsing test. Or someone could pick up the Ops position. Uh, this would be an Insight plus Con. And this, again, would be assisted by the ship's uh, computers plus con. Uh, difficulty of two. And shipboard tactics, tactical systems, I don't think would apply. No, not those, I'm afraid. Still, and you managed to make it. What did you say for the ship? Uh, you oh, never mind. Helsing Thanks, just, Cap. Or, Captain got it. Uh, so one more momentum for you guys. Uh, so, Mr. Helsing, I'm going to make a handout available to you with the information for, for you to quickly read and um, make mention if how they wish. You should see something about USS Veritas information. All right, so we're coming up with some information on the USS Veritas uh, launched in my apologies quickly hit the refresh on that because I missed out a very particular piece of text on it okay. Hold on. it might just not have populated yet it looks like it did um, looks like this show belonged to the Veritas that was an Excelsior class um, Veritas was launched in 2095 missing in action a year later it was a technical test bed for classified operations. So we might have to do some additional digging there. Uh, crew complement of 124. And the notable members of the crew were the captain, uh, Captain Nsaka, director of the Federation Science Bureau. All missing. The Federation Science Bureau. All the way out here in the expanse, years before we even knew this place existed. I. Man, I don't like the sound of this, but it's definitely interesting. But if that's the case, and that the Veritas was a real ship, why is it spray painted on the hull of the shuttle? Right. Suspect. I mean, you're not gonna be so, frankly, amateurish if you're going to label a secret shuttle. Right. Even a designation. Or it would have actually been labeled one or the other. Does this ship yeah. have pods? Like escape pods kind of thing? Because there's no it, one on it. It's a shuttlecraft. Okay. So this would probably be a, a pod. Okay. Of some type. Well, let's see if we can search through the intelligence database uh, and see if possibly whatever they're working on is on file. Unlikely, but if it isn't, we could also, if we, don't, if we don't find anything, probably send a communique to Director Chalmers at that Cerberus station and see if we could grab any other information that may be available to us, although it may take some time to reach here. Right. Um, I, pers Good, I personally would like to tractor it in and put a level four containment in the shuttle pod and take a look at it. Before we do that, sir, I'd like to give Lieutenant Viad and get a little bit more information, security-related information on that shuttle. I agree. And no disrespect to you, Commander Bashir, but I'd rather not have a secret shuttle being tracked into my shuttle bay before I know exactly what it was used for. Is there any way that we can remotely power it from a distance? Can we, can we send an energy beam? Uh, an energy tr a power transfer bead to it with the, can we if it, if the systems are too old is it possible that we can make these adaptations and with that if lieutenant vide can maybe run another scan any type of explosive device anything along those lines damage besides the the dings any type of disruptor marks that it might have been shot at, those type of things. Okay. Um, so this will be, uh, so Vaid or Helsing can roll me uh, Insight plus Security. Uh, ship can roll Sensors plus Security. 
Um, Damn, we're getting my inside security hard tonight. Yeah. Hey, you wanted to be a commander. Commanders require a lot of insight. <laughs> <laughs> Just think of this as, as a required character growth. Just glad it's not reason. <laughs> Are you rolling it, Helsing? Uh, yeah, because I have a, with the security. Yeah. And based on what I'm looking for, shipboard tactical systems, ship I'll tactics. Let, yeah, I'll let that go. Okay. Is it I'm going to steal one of those. Mo- I'm going to steal one of those momentum. Okay. And I'm sorry, Vade, what were you saying? Is it possible to assist, um, I guess, with the sensors? Given how badly <sighs> Liam just rolled, um, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can assist. Um, you can assist with sensors plus security, please. Or, yeah, nope, uh, insight uh, security. I'm doing it again. Would her assist count since I didn't even make a success? Oh, no, it wouldn't. Uh, that's right. Without, ah. Unless the primary person <laughs> makes at least one success. The assister doesn't get anything. So, um, um, Liam, you're not detecting any signs of uh, blast marks, um, scrapes, scuffs, or any. It doesn't even look like they've. Uh, doesn't even look like this shuttle scraped the side of the uh, shuttle bay on its way out. Aside oh, from we still didn't roll the ship, did we? Well, ship can't help either. Not sure. Yeah, I, I have to pass. You have to get one success. <clears throat> I'm gonna pop a momentum. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge one actually. Oh, and what are you challenging? Oh, you mean you're challenging your value? A, a value check. Ah. I'm gonna challenge once a Borg, always a Borg. Okay. And how is that appropriate in this situation? Oh, it's, okay. It's yeah. not. Well, it could be the Borg who did it. No. <laughs> I mean, that's a stretch. Yeah, I'm out. Can't even do that. True. Oh, well. Looks clean, sir. Can I go ahead and see if I can scan it for potential, like, uh, we already said there were, no organic manner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh... Actually, can we scan uh, the surrounding asteroid field or the system to see if there's possibly any either impacts or debris evidence from the shuttlecraft? Or other uh, Starfleet or other Starship residue, perhaps? Or other Starship residue. Um, I mean, just looking for other information here because the system seems pretty soul like and close together. Yeah. Okay. Um, Roll me. Uh, so whoever wants to roll can roll me Insight Science. Ooh, me. Um, and the ship will assist with uh, Sensors Science. And this is going to be a difficulty of two. And remember that the ship has the, I believe it's the High Precision Sensors Talent, which get, generates extra momentum on a success. Ooh, nice. And ship got one. Okay, so four successes altogether, so I believe that's two more momentum, plus one from the ship, so you're you're at max. Uh, so the, the, the solar system itself is fairly um, devoid of anything that would re- resemble ship traffic. Uh, there's not even a stale ion trail out here from when a passing freighter may have gone by. Um, given the desolation of, or given the distance of this particular system from any of the other known habitable worlds, even Station Cerberus, that's just not traveled in any in any way. Um, the only thing is, is that the second planet you find um, is very uh, ha- is extremely radioactive. Um, it is reading high levels of polonium radiation which is preventing the ship sensors from penetrating it. I should also mention okay. that yeah, that the gas giant is similar, but anything that enters a gas giant is dead anyways. So, well, anything that enters the Venus planet is probably also dead, but, mm, well. And before I make any moves on the shuttle, I'd still like to see if I can grab anything from the intelligence database for whatever the... Uh 
Okay. This is mission one. Sure. Uh, insight. Uh, let's roll insight science, please, for the captain. Uh, ship can assist with um, computers plus science. Difficulty of <laughs> one because it is the captain making the roll. Thanks. I can't delegate that to someone else. <laughs> yeah, like me. <laughs> like my science office. You don't want me making that wrong. No. You're the captain. You're the one checking the intelligence database. Well, let's go find out. Uh, if you have like. I was about to ask if we needed to actually hack into the database to see if it we seems more info. <laughs> the captain, you're just not having a good day. Um, <laughs> first... Can't grant them special authorization <laughs> to do so. I mean, if you want to spend your determination at this stage and re-roll, that's up to you. Yeah, but Not at the moment. Uh, USS Veritas is... Uh, it appears that this that whatever it was... Uh, whatever the USS Veritas was doing, it was classified above captain level. So, Admiralty and above. Ooh. Well, in any case, uh, all of any anything that we're going to find out about the ships, or this shuttlecraft, rather, the answers are going to be on board, but I still don't necessarily want that here. So, Commander Sashan, if you could work on actually powering up the shuttle's uh, power systems externally would be preferred. Uh, go ahead and do so. All right, I'll start working on that. Um, what check do you need for that? Uh, probably uh, Insight Engineering would be a good one. To okay. Uh, this will be a difficulty. Well, depending on how, let's say, depending on how many successes you get is the answer I will give you. Okay, uh, well, I do have power systems in the focus. That's a good one. All right, I will spend a momentum since we have a ton. Sure. Okay. Uh, so three successes. Um, given the that the captain has asked for a remote solution, uh, your first thought is to simply take a shuttlecraft with a um, backup generator over to the shuttle and perform it, the switch manually. But then you recall that there was a... A few times when Federation ships were required to set up a power transfer beam uh, to other vessels in need of it, most Federation sh most Federation ships have a, a similar outlet and can be uh, tuned so that the energy Im so that the deflector uh, that the ship's deflector array uh, can uh, be modulated to beam power into an awaiting shuttle or an awaiting starship of any sort whether or not this shuttle is too is too dead or not to accept it you've yet to figure that out all right well not to worry captain our whole discussion about um, powering up our tractor beam has uh took, took my memory and uh, i think we can um try transferring power to the shuttle remotely um, if you would like me to proceed, I can start working on that and see if that's successful. Well, by all means, make haste, Commander Thorshan. All right. So I'll start uh, working on that. Okay. Also, uh, just to be on the safe side, whatever this secret shuttle was out here doing, whenever you power it up, I want to make sure it's not going to go anywhere. So let's have this tractor beam on standby and even if oh gee I'm, even if the uh whatever the actual ship's missions was above my clearance level mm -hmm. i mean at this point these these prefix codes wouldn't be a secret you know if we needed to override these missions all right just making sure so yeah. we i want to make sure once we power it up it doesn't go anywhere fair enough <clears throat> okay uh now so let's have that sounds like a scene for uh, Thishran and uh, Vaid to do. So, um, Thishran, if you could please roll me a... Well, depends on how you want to do it. If you just want to make a quick and dirty power transfer, that would be daring plus engineering. Or if you want to, you know, take the time and do it right, that would be control engineering. Uh, I'll just do it quickly. I don't think we're in any... Um... 
any need to set this up, uh, fix it permanently. We just want to figure out what's going on first. Okay. Uh, so that is going to be a daring engineering. And if Vaid could assist, please, with daring plus science. Uh, what's the difficulty? Uh, dif this is going to be difficulty of three. Okay. Um, I'll spend another momentum on this then. And just for some fun, I'm going to spend a couple points of threat to increase the threat range to <laughs> 18 to 20. Okay. And I still have power systems as a focus. So. That would work well. Yeah. All right. I, I don't have a focus for this one. <laughs> okay. And that's still a success. Oh, that threat was spent for nothing. Oh, well. Yep. And we get back uh, momentum. You do. For you the get one I used. one back. Yep. <clears throat> Ah, the deflector dish is modulated and is ready to energize. All right, I'll uh, chime into the bridge. Uh, Captain, we're, we're ready to uh, begin. I have the tractor beam ready, um, just in case anything happens. Very well. Proceed. All right, I'll hit the button. Okay. And um, so let's see here. Okay, that is a success. The shuttle systems are are tuned well to eh, are accepting the power transfer, and it takes a few minutes of you just crossing your fingers, toes, and antennae, um, praying that it works. <coughs> All of a sudden, the shuttle's interior and exterior lights um, reactivate. And immediately a transmission is being sent on all frequencies from it. On screen. Uh, on on screen is a Vulcan woman. Um, fairly old. My name is... <coughs> this is Director Nasaka of the Federation Science Bureau. The USS Ver Veritas has crashed on a planet nearby. We are requesting assistance. Anyone, if there is anyone nearby that can assist us, please send help. We fear we have damaged the planet and will not last long. Repeat, this is Captain Nasaka, or this is Nasaka, director of the Federation Science Bureau. The USS Veritas has crashed at a nearby planet. If you are able, please send help. I fear we will not last long. And it continues to repeat. Did she say that they damaged the planet? I heard that as well. So, let's pull up our astrometric sensors do we actually have <laughs> is there a planet or is record? everything around us the planet <laughs> yeah exactly the that's the real question thankfully along with the uh, communication is a set of coordinates indicating the class n planet the second one in the system and the uh, these types of uh, sublight shuttles were not meant to travel intergalactic. It's most likely had run out of uh, power halfway to the gas giant and died. So, speculation, people. These people, the the Federation was here at least at some point more than a century ago. The likelihood of them still being alive is slim, but if the potential is there, what exactly? Would we be would we be finding on this M class planet? Oh, shit. That's a question to the crew. Mm. Since she scanned it, um, Miss Vaid, I'm going to make you a I'm going to make available to you a handout containing a little bit of the planet information. Feel free to flavor it as necessary. Oh crap! Where, where do I find? So uh, there's a handouts column um, above your character sheets, and in there should be oh. one called Planet Info. 
and I made it available to the wrong person. That's why you don't see it. Um, oh, let's, no! <laughs> let's rectify that, shall we? Here we go. Turns out, sir, that there are high levels of polonium radiation and our scanners are unable to penetrate. But I was able to gather that there are high levels of carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and methane. It's a very nice green. <laughs> Just in case you want to know. The methane. Well, although I do like pretty colors, can you speculate for me, science officer? What is the polonium on this planet a natural cause? Uh, uh, because, yes. Go for it. Um, if you wish to roll, let's roll reason plus science, and if you have anything along the lines of weather patterns or geology, or planetary sciences. Stuff like that would work. Phenology, I miss you. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that doesn't count. I hit the wrong thing. <laughs> I see reason science. <laughs> but yes, no, I accidentally put focus on oh. there when I don't have one. Well, either way, you wouldn't have had a success. As honestly, well, you got zero successes, and you're not entirely certain. I'm sorry, sir. I cannot speculate on this matter. Well, either way, we're gonna have to try to figure out what happened to these people, and whatever they were out here testing. I just hope this, the polonium itself, wasn't the damage, or I hope it wasn't something else. If they could even survive on whatever this M class esque planet is at this point. Do we have, um, and this is going to be a long shot, but uh, even, if even if Lieutenant Vade can't really speculate, do we have any older spectrographic readings of this sector? So to potentially see the type of chemicals that were in the atmosphere a oh, few centuries ago? Interesting question. Um, Technically, Starfleet did send quite a few probes through this area um, before, you know, we moved in here. Mm -hmm. So we should have some sort of information on record. Okay. And the information from the Hobbit ship that we downloaded and mm -hmm. decoded recently? Okay. Well, tell you what, if you want to spend the two momentum to give to get the advantage, I'll give you the answer. Objections? I nope. Do it. All right. Okay. So it it takes a it takes an hour or so for the massive computers of the Nighthawk to sort through all the historical data, pull, trying to pull what you have. There appears to be a uh, the radiation from the Carceri Nebula has definitely fuzzed things up, um, as or spectrom spectromagnetically. Um, uh, uh, over the past few centuries but there's a couple ch points that came through clearly one would have been in the late 20th or let's see the early 23rd century uh, where Starfleet began ex uh, expanding their spectros spectrographic telescopes from planet based structures into um, space based matrices where multiple um, in where multiple facilities can then try triangulate and attempt to get far more precise readings. Uh, there was one that was dated in 2270, so about uh, 15 years before the Veritas vanished, uh, which shows this particular system as primarily or as more or less the same, except that this the second planet would have read with a more standard class M environment, uh, more uh, breathable levels of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. And then uh, just before dispatch, 
or on his um, deciding to um, build Deep Space 15 out in this area, Admiral Riker ordered several um, ordered several more cursory glances through this sector with uh, uh, spectroscopic probes, and by that point, the planet had indeed shifted atmosphere to carbon dioxide, uh, polonium, and methane. All right, so it's reasonable to assume that the polonium or whatever the atmosphere is like now wasn't like this even a few decades after whatever the Veritas was doing here. Correct. Then we may have something else to investigate. Either way, let's uh, grab whatever we can from the shuttle's logs, and if, <laughs> if our engineer deems it completely ready and tops tops to spec and no hidden surprises, then I have no problems tracking it. In. Then let's preliminarily set a coast set a course to uh, the planet. Right. Okay. Um, there are, in the interest of story, uh, Thishan, you find no other potential hidden bombs, aliens, uh, parasites, or biologic or potential um, non corporeal life forms that could potentially kill everyone. Uh, so you've decided, you believe it's safe to bring it aboard. Okay. I will. So uh, there is no picture. biologicals left on the in the thing. No biologicals. So they just. So they just sent the shuttle out by itself. There was no pilot. That seems to be the case. Let's have the binaries pull the data banks of the shuttle while we uh, go ahead and set a course to the planet. Okay. We'll set ourselves to the planet. And it is indeed a nice green planet if you like the color of pea soup. <clears throat> okay, so we are going to cut to the data lab. All right, who wants to be in on the scene? Oh, it's yeah. my it's my favorite mm -hmm. lab. Yep, yeah, I'd like to be there. Okay, so pretty much everyone, it sounds like, except maybe I'll Hells. go ahead and remain on the bridge. Okay. I'll stay up top. Guys and Miss Vaid. <clears throat> okay, one zero one one. Uh, take the uh, older style um, data or computer core and plug it into their the new state of the art twenty uh, fifth century um, computer. And they, it's not as easy as plug and play because it's trying to pull a computer from the 1990s and try to get it to talk seamlessly into a computer of the modern era. Just add another century. Eventually, they're able to pull some data. There's a, f there's a couple, log fi couple log files, some coordinates. Everything else appears to be scrubbed. And once again, there is the holographic representation of Nisaka if you're if you have received if you're reading this message then it is likely that you have recovered at least one of our shuttles that has been sent off in a vain attempt to get help we have crash landed on the second planet of this of the system in these coordinates our drive has ruptured and is spewing highly radioactive material across the planet, killing everything. It is unlikely we will survive. However, we are attempting to... Ju our chief engineer, the one that survived, is attempting to rig a, a safety shell that could protect us for an indefinite period of time. We have some rations, more once if we can get a replicator going. The situation is dire, but we will attempt to survive until help can be found, or help can find us. Nasaka out. Uh, 
We found out how it, there's so much pol is polonium in it. Polonium. Right. <laughs> the Shran, can you... analyze this... I, even the most scrubbed computer programs leave something behind. All right. Like, uh, can can yep. you possibly take a look at that? Sure. Uh, yes, leave it to me. Uh, control plus engineering, and if someone wants to take one zero and one one and roll assistance, or the ship could assist, one or the other. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty three. And what would the ships be? I uh, think the bio ship would be rolling computers plus engineering. One zero and one one would be rolling what? Uh, insight engineering. That probably would be better. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right, one more success. Can we get one more? Hold on. And this is computers, right? Yep, that's yep, that's right. There's the successes you need. Uh, the there is indeed traces of uh, information left because it's a shuttle system. Most of it is uh, transitory uh, information or possibly passengers. Um, very little of it, of course, would be about the ship itself. Um, there is a a few instances where it has traveled between a Utopia Planitia, uh, the major shipyards or orbiting Mars, Mars itself. And then there is a couple where it is um, or originating from the planet that you guys are now orbiting. There isn't a, there isn't much left. Uh, the date or the time logs between the, or the time stamps between the um, ghost logs or what's left of it appears to only be maybe um, it appears to be how would it be it would be about maybe three weeks at most okay that's not too long ago uh, I'm no no three weeks so the last entry when it was in Mars was three weeks before its time entry on the planet below. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Still 200 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, yes. wait a second, three weeks ago, that's really recent. That's not, that's only about 110-ish, I think, years? Still. Yeah. What do you wish to do? Well, I don't think we're going to get any information. <laughs> All right. So, Captain, your orbit, uh, the U.S. or Jefferson reports that you have reached the orbit of the planet and. Indeed, the atmosphere is too thick to get any detailed sensor readings of the planet below, and transporters are definitely not going to function. So there's only one way down there. And it's by shuttlecraft. And the shuttle uh, wasn't actually uh, damaged, right? It was just out of power because we didn't Correct. find any impacts or anything of, of the sort? Correct. Okay. Can we... From in the science, I'll go ahead and comms the science lab and see if we get a trace, if there's any record of the pre prior shuttle's flight plan, and so maybe we could possibly replicate that. If we can find out where it took off and came from, maybe we could just replicate that with our descent. You know what? I'll give it to you since they've already done a successful um, sc uh, scour of the shuttle plan. You do find the departure coordinates from the planet. All right, then. Well, if that's the case, uh, I'll go ahead and comms 
Commander Bashir to go ahead and get an away team ready. Absolutely. All right, away team. I'd like to put additional probes uh, within the atmosphere during their descent, though, just okay. in case. I mean, this this M Zen class plan is weird and funky. So even though transporters aren't a possibility, <laughs> I'd like to potentially enable them. I'd like to set up a series of hoppers. Okay. That sounds like it'll take a couple scenes for something like that to become established, but when that happens, I will let you know. Or we'll just give you the two momentum and you'll create the advantage, one way or the other. And if we go down with EVA suits or... Yeah, we're definitely going to. EVA, how how EVA long suits, would those last? Uh, EVA suits will obviously cost no threat in this instance. Um, someone should probably roll... Um, Let's see. Uh, you estimate that exposed to the atmosphere, um, any non-reinforced EVA suit will probably have a lifespan of about three or four hours. I said, you think that'll be enough time on ground? How long? Well, I'm not... Take a look around. I mean, it'll have to be right. Yeah, exactly. I was like, <laughs> it was like much of a choice. Might well, be able to be run. rude, but go ahead. Might be able to have spares on board a shuttle or transport them down. I mean, unless you want me to tinker of some some suits. I was gonna say that whatever happened to this planet has been happening for a while. So how long would it take us to actually reinforce our suits and to modify them? Um, that would be. Well, you can either give me a two threat, and I say it happens pretty darn quick, or you could roll a test at um, two difficulty, and it will take an hour to prep six away to prep six uh, EVA suits. I mean, I don't think we're under a specific particular time crunch, right? So I don't think there's an issue. Been over it. 110 years. Yeah, what's What's another hour, right? Probably everything hinges on this. Yeah. <laughs> we only uh, have twenty minutes to save their lives. <laughs> Alright, so what when do I what do I spend the test and then try to uh Okay. To tinker with these suits. Okay. Uh control plus engineering then. Alright. Um how about if I use my bold and uh, add a D twenty with a, <laughs> a new threat? Oh. Okay. Works for me. You'll give me threat. That sounds like fun, yeah. Sure. Why not? What's what's the worst that could happen? Oh, you sweet summer child. <laughs> All right, three D twenty, and I get a reroll one if it's. Uh... Um, would hazard awareness count as a focus? I would say so in this instance, yes. Well, that's enough. All right. Uh, uh, you okay. can reroll that zero for an extra momentum if you want. Sure. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, you're a so you're able to jury rig some uh, extra plating onto some of the more vulnerable suit parts, as well as a small uh, energy shield within each one. Doesn't have a lot of power, but it should be enough to uh, about triple the lifespan. So the suits were, would have been four hours. They are now twelve. Oh, here, here you go, uh, Captain. I think a bunch of new suits uh, ready for an entire day's worth of exploration. Didn't you say 12 hours? Entire working day of exploration. <laughs> this planet has a short day cycle. Yeah. Ah, I, don't, I don't know where you come from, but, uh, you know. <laughs> All right. So we are going to take Commander Helsing. Myself, Lieutenant Commander the Shran, and Lieutenant the uh, It was how do you pronounce it? Vaid. <laughs> okay. Um, Captain. And I would like an extra security officer too. Hanara would probably be a good one. Okay. So we're bringing along Hanara. Uh, is that going to be the captain's character, or do you wish to bring someone else? 
Ah, that's all I was planning on. Unless the captain wants to play somebody in particular. <laughs> so, important question here, who's flying the shuttle? Some bitch. Uh, <laughs> I got a con of one. I don't want me to drive. I have a con of three. There three. you go. You have no focus. You have five people on this away mission so far, right? Uh, yep. Yeah, we could have an additional pilot. Just Sam. Yeah, you could. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We have Elena Jackson. Uh, we have another con officer because Jefferson's right now driving the ship, so he can go ahead and take her along. Yeah. Just a suggestion, but it's your mission. Okay. Right? Okay. All right. The <laughs> pilots are good. <laughs> okay. Lena Jackson <clears throat> must be the first time using her because I haven't run her p picture through the token generator yet. Cool. Okay. On the shuttle. Anybody have any shuttle banter they wish to do? <laughs> shuttle banter. <laughs> Doesn't sound like I'm. Row, painting. Painting the armor. Like, you know what? These could use a little, little more color. Can, you think? Can we paint on the side of the shuttle, USS Nighthawk? <laughs> I mean, it's a little late now, as um, a lot uh, of. Well, we're in space. Oh. Use the EV suit to airbrush the side of the ship. Yeah. Oh, wait. No. Really important question. Hmm? Which shuttle are we taking? That is a good question. What shuttle are you taking? Do you have a choice? I guess there are options, aren't there? <laughs> I mean, do you want to take the unknown shuttle that we just picked up that uh, we haven't fully vetted? I'd rather, rather you didn't, because the GM didn't spec them. Oh. Is that the 9-2 or the XX? Because we have the Phantom. Phantom definitely has is large enough for all of you. The Spectre is not. And there's a type XX. I was gonna say the Phantoms. I mean, it's not like we're. It's not like we're trying to go undercover. Or <laughs> trying to be stealthy. Well, um, what type I, of module? What were you gonna ask? What type of modules? Yeah, we got passenger. Cargo longer or attacks for the fan, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, I was gonna say, you know, let's think about the type of mission that we're going on. So, we're gonna see if we could find any evidence of whatever the Federation science, whatever, was doing out. So, it, so attacks, mm -hmm. micro torpedoes, yes, okay, of course, <laughs> of course, why not? Micro torpedoes for the win, okay. I do want to take. Um, I do want to take transporter um, buffers, or what okay. they're called, the uh, enhancers. Enhancers, yes. enhancers. Enhancers. Okay. That's what I was. Pattern enhancer. Yes. I believe I get to get some threat because of that. So thank you. No problem. Anybody else? Anybody wish to bring any other specialized mission equipment? Well, even though the OA team is bringing pattern enhancers, I know we already said we're. This is gonna be a scene change time table stuff but can they at least put down a few uh like atmosphere coppers during their descent or would you classify that as a as mission equipment so we need to bump up mm -hmm. things like for that i will let that happen <clears throat> i will let that happen uh they uh the personal shielding on those will only will last roughly 12 hours before they uh, lose shielding and the atmosphere begins to eat away at them, but yes. Well, if anybody else has anything else they want to bring down, go for it. And that's the only thing I care about. Not the safety of the crew. Apparently not. <laughs> okay. Uh, so whoever is ro rolling um, Alana Jackson, if you could please roll me Daring plus Con. And the USS Phantom can assist with uh, engines plus con. 
as you begin to fight your way through the pea soup of an atmosphere and the roiling storms and the occasional lightning bolt that flies past. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two. I'll go ahead and grab her. All right. Okay. Um, so there is a blast to the side of the hull as it takes a lightning bolt straight to the side of it. Ah, you can throw me some challenge dice. <laughs> Ooh, that would be um, three stress to the shuttle. So, off of the shields? Yep, so the shields will take the hit. And... Right so the Phantom is now down to one shield left. And the, sh the shuttle banks sharply to the right, as most of you are thrown against your uh, harnesses as you do so. Um, so, are you guys actually wearing your EVA suits right now? <coughs> I'm assuming without the helmets. Good plan. Okay. Uh, roll me one more. Daring plus con and engines plus con. Again, difficulty of... Uh, as you're getting through the atmosphere, the difficulty decreases. So it's only difficulty two now. And Miss Jackson. All right, you get one momentum. Well, Alana may have been, or Elena may have been caught flat-footed once before, but her uh, Vulcan heritage is not going to allow her to show weakness again, as she definitely avoids a, a sudden bout of air pressure that tries to catch the shuttle and spin it around off course. And she lands you expertly on the ground. Or at least into the air, I should say. So, you come upon a fairly large uh, mountain. And the, the terrain itself is rocky, uh, void of all life, uh, barren, uh, signs of acid rain that have scorched, or that have burned away all, any trace of whatever might have left here. Uh, there is a volcano that is letting out a slight of wisp of volcanic uh, smoke, but overall seems to be dormant. The most interesting feature is halfway down, laying on its side, is an Excelsior-class vessel, uh, USS Veritas NCC-2014, uh, emblazoned on its hull. Uh, the ship has been has a nasty scar running along its starboard side engineering hull uh, that has opened it to the atmosphere. Uh, the, sh the saucer section is sitting at an odd angle that will indicate to anyone that the neck brace is that once held it so securely is no longer doing its job as it lists at an odd angle. Okay, I'd like to do a scan for life science. Okay. Uh, this is going to be an insight plus medicine test, please. And the shuttle can assist with insight plus, or with uh, <coughs> sensors plus medicine. And that is three successes, which is one more success than you needed. Uh, nope, sorry, that's just the one success from the Phantom. We're just waiting for... Moi. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, I had somehow closed my don't character you, sheet. Don't you hate it when that happens? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of annoying. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Cool. 
Okay, so there are several life signs coming from the ship itself. Uh, the atmosphere does not give you a clear indication of what they are, but there are several on board. Uh, there are also, you're also picking up something, although it's very hard to read through even the ambient radiation. Um, there appears to be a cluster um, beneath the ship in within a cave system underneath the ship. Um, okay. And I believe that is an extra one momentum to add to your guys' pool. Actually, it's a scene change, so you lose that one anyways. So, hmm. <laughs> Remember the good old days where he forgot that every <sighs> single time? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm All right. our good GM. Excellent. Is there any way that we can dock with the Excelsior class. Um, the shuttle bay in the rear of the ship does appear to be accessible. Uh, the ship has no deflector screens, but it also doesn't have a heck of a lot of power, so whether or not the bay will open to accept you is a matter. Or you could just land mm. on the hull and walk in through one of the scars on the ship. Kind of oh, what I was oh. thinking. Before we start you know, bring the ship on top of us, or how precariously is it on this mountainside? Like, if we land on it, does that extra weight cause it to slide? Ooh, good question. Um, uh, just because you might need more momentum, I'll let you roll for that. Um, this is going to be insight engineer, uh, Romy Reason Engineering, actually. Uh, whoever wants to make that check. I'll let an engineer do that one. If you have structural... <clears throat> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, if you have structural integrity or um, material science or balancing acts, something like that would work. <laughs> uh, not quite. Is, does interpretive dance count? <laughs> Given that the starship is not capable of moving, no. I did but we're trying to see if it line. would move. Okay, so All that right. is one success, or two successes, one momentum. Uh, Thetran, given the scar left behind this, um, sh given the, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, given the debris trail, or the gouge, that's the word, the gouge that this ship has left in the mountainside as it landed, um, it's not going to go anywhere. It's rather firmly entrenched That's good um right. exo one other <coughs> thing to consider since this has been a hundred years this could be a first contact type situation again but they are work capable so prime directive doesn't really apply <laughs> I I just want you to know that you can fuck this up. <laughs> I'm looking out for you, sir. Out for you. Uh huh. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'm always there for you. <laughs> appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, Janet. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. <laughs> oh God. Are you for real? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Bring us in. Okay, so whereabouts are you going to land? Are you going to land alongside the ship by the major scar? Or are you going to, you know, do go elsewhere? Well, let's try going through the scar. Okay. <clears throat> so oh, the sneak route. Do they have, does it look like they have power? There is no power. No power. Roger. Okay, so uh, give me a split second here. I am going to. This is just too big to share on uh, through the Roll20 system because otherwise it automatically compresses it and makes it unreadable. So I am going to make it. I'm going to share it on to you guys through my Google Drive, which is basically an MSD of the Excelsior class. 
so that we can all talk about where you guys are wanting to go. Okay, so in the um, G drive of the, or in the Google Drive, the shared document thing, there should be an Excelsior MSD ping file. Oh, wow, yeah. So feel free to open that up. And for reference, I'm going to put you around the middle of the ship where you guys will end up somewhere now well, somewhere above the shuttle bay <clears throat> near the near the main deflector dish is where you guys will enter so we will take the sh and if you have any questions feel free to let me know okay so shuttle is here and you guys are going to be here um now is elena jackson are you going to stay on the shuttle or are you going to head uh, head in as well i believe that's up to the commander if he wants me to join this away team otherwise well, i'm content with staying on the ship the <laughs> shuttle will i mean should be able to i mean should be able to stay there right if there's if you know, if we're if we're landing and there's no atmospheric forces that's going to remove the shuttle from its current location, then I'll go ahead and join while we lock the shuttle bay door. Okay. Okay. So you're coming too. Fantastic. <coughs> okay. Copy you. Move you here. So we'll find ourselves. Your EVA suits are as claustrophobic and as hot and muggy as the training vids uh, always say, but they are still able to, you know, keep you safe against the hissing and the corrosion. <coughs> Thankfully, um, the Shran, your engineering um, thoroughness. Um, and your lack of jury rig for a change has m improved this suit's uh, integrity well enough that even though you think you hear a slight hissing, it's probably just in the mind's eye. Uh, the corridors that you are walking down are pitch black, uh, except where the natural light will penetrate just a couple rooms before fading into nothingness. Um, you hear... Mm, or you feel, I should say, a slight rumble beneath your feet coming from the uh, volcanic surface belo or below. But that seems to be the only thing. Uh, there is a mess of debris strewn across this part of the ship from where it impacted hard against the ground. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, what do you wish to do? Hello? So, yeah, I'd like to try to take out my tricorder and see if I can scan for like any immediate life signs or any remnants on, on board the ship. Okay. This is going to be insight medicine, please. Uh, difficulty of uh, two. And you make it. So there are life signs around, but they're not humanoid. Closest you can think, or closest your tricorder will match is insectoid. Commander, I'm reading some insectoid-like life signs on board this vessel. And do we just... There we go. We're in a, in a hive of... It's, I'm having visions of anthills being stirred up. 
geonosis. Um, I'd like, like to. Like yeah, that's in my thoughts too. Um, well, I think we need to, if we're going to try to figure out why this happened and what they were doing, I still think we need to make our way to the bridge and see if the Shran can get any power and we can get any information. So where are the life signs coming from? Can you tell? Uh, the life signs are... Uh, they appear to be clustered in the main engineering area, um, as well as the uh, ship's lounge, sick bay, and that's about as far as you can get before the interference from the radiation blocks everything. And how many in total, just out of that range? Uh, difficult to determine. Um, more than a dozen. Uh, less than a hundred. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, relay all that other information into the other members of the away team's tricorders. Okay. Let's make our way to the bridge. Okay. Roger <clears throat> that. Uh, so this is going to be a, uh, if someone, uh, so someone roll me insight plus engineering, pl nope, roll me reason plus engineering, and one person can assist. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of two, and the reason for this is to navigate the broken ship in a safe as f uh, manner as possible. Okay. Uh, hazard awareness focus? I would say that's a good focus, yes. Reason engineering. Okay, okay that's one from you, and... All right. <clears throat> so, uh, Thashran, you are... Because the ship has no turbo lifts, you have to go the manual way. And in the Excelsior classes, that typically meant either uh, ladders uh, between decks or Jeffrey's tubes. And everyone knows how much fun crawling around in Jeffrey's tubes is, especially in uh, your type, your armor or your EVA suits. So it's going to take you roughly, or you estimate it's going to take roughly about an hour or so to traverse the ship. Um, to get to the bridge. Actually, no, that'd probably be closer to half an hour where you are to where they're going. So we are going to plop. And I sure hope no one's uh, claustrophobic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Is it roll. too late to raise my hand? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> hmm. I said you're rolling that number quite frequently. Okay. Congratulations, you make it to the bridge. You all see Helsing kind of getting, when he comes out of the tube, he comes out of it a little bit faster than would normally be expected, just getting out of the <laughs> open again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You breathing okay, sir? Where's the table where you put your tea? No. <laughs> I think that, that was standard only to uh, Sulu's ship. Do they yeah. have seatbelts? Uh, sorry, what what were you going to say there? I, I mean, they have wood. <laughs> I'm saying they had wood grain, and do they have seatbelts? No. Nope. Uh, seatbelts were an invention for the Enterprise E. <laughs> Is the carpet more cushy by the captain's seat? Uh, given the amount of corrosiveness in the environment, there is no carpet left. <laughs> Where they're going, they don't need seatbelts. Right. But apparently oh, they did. Can I raid one of the uh, like decks? Because I, I really like one of those uniforms. Because those were really stylish. <laughs> uh, hello, acid corrosiveness people? There's no uniforms oh, left. Oh, damn. 
Heck, half these panels are non-functioning just because there's nothing left there. Maybe you could uh, salvage enough to make a nice uh, swimsuit. <laughs> yeah, with the flap. Yeah. <laughs> it's the su summer edition. Summer uniform. <laughs> Oh god! I like how this is happening in character. All right, this ran. Let's see if we can plug into something. All right. I'll look up, look for uh, any available, uh, I guess, terminals to okay. um, plug into. Uh, this is. Uh, let's roll me a. I'm asking you to roll a lot of these, but this is going to be yet another insight engineering. Uh, difficulty of two, please. All right. And I guess uh, power systems again? Power systems count? will work, yep. Now, did you bring a power? Did you bring a mobile power plant with you or backup batteries or anything like that? I did not think to do so. Well, if you give me threat retrospectively, I will... If you give me threat, I will say that retrospectively you did. Or momentum? No, it'll have to be threat at this point. Ah. Sure. Okay, I'll take two from there. Okay. Yeah. What's that role uh, for, Bashir? I was helping him search for... Oh, yes. Good plan. So, Bashir helped. And oh. that's another two momentum. Cool. So, you guys are able to find a... Co you guys are able to find a console uh, b hidden behind a protective panel. You're able to pull it open, and the panel just sort of snaps in two as you touch it. But behind that are components that are more or less in usable uh, fashion. Jackpot. <laughs> Hooking things up, you're able to activate, let's say, this console right over here. And apparently I'm not showing the ping to anyone else but myself. I was going to say, there's no pinging. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea why that's not working. You might oh, be on the wrong layer. layer. There we go. That layer. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> All right, let's uh, let's take a look at this uh, little birdie and see what's uh, going on. Okay. Uh, the console itself. Can we get it? oh, apologies. Go ahead. I was going to ask. Uh, even though we're booting up the bridge, I'd, I'd like to ask uh, if the strand is it possible to get the internal sensors online, or at least limited in a limited fashion on some decks. Is it something I would do at the same time, or is this uh, separate? Um, that's probably going to be a separate task. And that's probably okay. going to be an... Ex depending on how much of the ship you want to try to get figured out, that's going to be an extended task, and we'll get to that momentarily. Okay. Okay. And, yes. And also, um, XO, we probably need to check out the, uh, the captain's ready room, see if he has anything in there. Yeah, I was thinking that, too. So the captain's... Uh, just looking aside, the captain's ready room is the doors have been um, j jarred open, and there's of course no light coming from inside. Okay, so as the uh, uh, the Shran, as the computer boots up, uh, you are it welcomes you to the USS Veritas's main computer system. Please note that the main computer system is currently un unreachable. Switching to um, isolated mode. Science console 2 is active and ready for input. Does it have like, a, as we type it, it's got like the AOL, like, you know, as it's <laughs> connecting. <laughs> uh, Flashing cursor. If only I had the, yeah. the dial-up modem sound. Right, exactly. That's exactly what I'm picturing. Oh, God. Turns All right, down. let's see. Yeah, the science console. Hey, guess who's here? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm gonna see what I can pull up. Okay. Actually, uh, Helsing, if you want to check out the ready room while I try to access these files. Roger, I'd like to leave tomorrow with you. Is anybody else free who can come with me? I'll probably start looking over at the sensors. Okay. Okay. Well, if only the science station is active. Unless I can actually extrapolate a uh, course, which I'm pretty sure we can't do yet, I'll go ahead and go with Helsing. Okay, so Helsing and um, Elena going there. Oh, no, that's the Shran. 
um, Bashir's over here. Hanar is sticking behind. Vaid, what do you wish to do? I, think I'll, uh, I don't know if I can help Helsing <laughs> or okay. Jackson, so I'll go ahead and stay back. Yeah, stay over here. Cool. Okay, uh, so the computer is going to display uh, the most recent event, most recent events, um, because that's all that was in its memory before it lost power. Um, there is a mention of a of a uh, let's see so roughly two weeks ago there was uh, two weeks ago computer time I should say so you know right yeah 110 years in yeah. two weeks <laughs> yeah uh, the the order to engage the uh, um, the tr the transwarp drive was in was given uh, roughly two roughly um one week and uh, eight hours ago this uh, noticed a noticed retroactively that the ship has passed through a ion storm of some sort I say retroactively because the ship did not or was moving faster than the sensors could compensate so they ran they hit an ion storm before the ship actually could tell anyone that there was an ion storm present and after which there is a series of alerts ranging from unable to stop transwarp um, in, uh, ah, redundancy measures have failed experimental core uh, unable to, or unable to uh, safely power off experimental core. Caution, planet. Eject experimental core. Yes, no. Yes, selected. Have a good day, Captain. And that's roughly the span of the computer. Experimental. Meanwhile, as they are doing this, uh, Mr. Helsing and Miss Jackson are heading into the captain's ready room. Yeah, uh, as as your stab light uh, pierces the darkness, um, it notices um, something uh, scuffled behind the captain's desk. Okay. We have movement. And Look over that way with the light. And you see this thing. Measuring roughly one feet one foot tall. It peeks out behind the captain's desk. I shall make it I shall move the stream so that the stream can see. And then just move it here and make it slightly bigger so that you guys can see it. Uh, uh, I hate bug hunts. Yeah, please. Thanks. <laughs> it uh, looks, or it crane its a uh, maw out at you, <laughs> snaps it a couple times. And uh, what do you wish to do? Is it staying its distance? It is at. It is for the moment. Miss right. Jackson, can, face over? <laughs> can we hear what's going on? <laughs> I'm. You may have. I would say no, given that it's at the moment it's fairly quiet on both sides. Ms. Jackson, yeah. can you scan this to see if it's the same readings that you were getting on life signs earlier? Certainly. Okay. <coughs> um, would I have to check for that, or would I know? That's going to. Ah, uh, you have enough momentum. So. Uh, you pull out the tricorder. It makes the sounds for scanning, and as just as it conf confirms your suspicion that yes, indeed, it is the same, uh, this creature begins to scuttle forward and make a, and it begins to screech loudly. The universal translator picking anything up on this? Uh, no. We just. Try to talk to it, hold 
One hand forward, one hand, and more coming. More are coming from a vent above the captain's. We need to move, people. I should mention that none of you told me that you were bringing type 3 phasers. <laughs> no, we got type, type 2s. Yep. Sorry, oh. set the claymore up. I'm sorry, no, what? <laughs> the, the, the claymore. No, okay, never mind. <laughs> oh. This mission suddenly became a lot more exciting. <laughs> yeah. We can only spend so much on thread, I guess. Oh no, spend as much thread as you want. Please. I mean, thread got us into this problem, thread will get us out of this problem. All right, people, we need to move if you got everything you need. And we'll, Miss Jackson and myself will start walking back, slowly maintaining the same distance between ourselves and the creatures. Okay. So you notice, um, actually, roll me a, uh, yeah, another insight plus security, please. And if you have <laughs> tactical awareness or hostile actions or something like that that would that would interpret other enemies movement uh, infiltration covert ops yeah. ship covert dogs that counts no that's not going to do it i'm afraid so yeah uh, i'd like just to call my two i'd like um, to call my oh. i know we got that bug is a dead bug i believe that this is your first time playing this character so she doesn't get anything <laughs> Unfortunate. Yes. Oh, I tried. Yes, you tried. I'm going to go ahead and pop one of the momentum. Okay. Five, let me three dice. <clears throat> I don't have a focus. No, that's just sad. All right. Okay, so... Hmm. I could let that succeed at th with threat at cost. I notice you're not interested in taking me up on that offer. Okay. Hey, I, I told you, throw gets into this, gets out of this problem, does it get us into this problem? The, <laughs> so the, uh, the bugs lurch towards where you guys were and begin to, uh, uh, screech and cackle at one another <laughs> as they begin to start fanning out the bridge over the bridge, trying to. Oh. It's at this point that the rest of you notice this too. Is there a way to like block off areas so our path back out is easy? <laughs> um, Using the computer. Which way did we come in? Right behind uh, Thorshan. Yeah. Yeah. So. Recommend you all collect what you have, and we start moving out the way we came in. Slowly. But why? Why slowly? Don't want to agitate them. All right. Y'all start moving. Miss Jackson, go back. Anara, lead them out. Uh, at this point, if um, let's have two of you, please. Actually, no. This is going to be an opposed roll. So one of you, please roll me fitness security, and you will be defending against one of the bugs. Um, insight plus security. Just anybody? Yeah, just one of you. Uh, probably Hanara, since you dedicated, told her to lead the way out. Told him up to the or top, him. probably him. Yes, told him. Okay, so I believe defense rolls first. Is anybody playing Hanara? Okay. So the there is one degree of success, so Hanara needs to meet or beat one degree of success. I'll pull them up. And you said it was fitness security? Uh, fitness security. Hand-to-hand? Uh, -hand? Uh, not in this instance. If you have stealth, that would work better. In infiltration? Infiltration would work. Actually? Okay, and they have a, a focus that they need to activate. Okay. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
And let's go ahead and use the momentum too. Okay. Easy. So you get uh, two momentum out of the deal. And with Hanara's uh, steady guidance, you're able, or he's able to indicate where these, in, where you should be stepping to avoid making any excess sound or movement. And you guys find yourself outside the bridge. And it's not long before the uh, screeching of the bugs calms down and eventually goes silent once more. So I'm not... I like to look at my tricorder to see if we're picking up any additional ones immediately surrounding us. Or are they back in the same locations that I saw when we boarded? They seem to have... Uh, d they seem to have retreated for the moment. Excellent, excellent security instincts, sir, Miss Jackson. So I'm assuming are attracted to noise or movement. Okay. Well. The experimental drive, that sounds fun, but it was ejected so it could be anywhere on this planet and could possibly be what the uh, contaminant is. Were you able to see <laughs> what made up the, the experimental I, drive that we might be able to scan for from orbit? No, I didn't get a chance to do any scanning on uh, the experimental drive except for getting information on it that it was what basically screwed up their high, our, uh um, Transwarp. Uh, so nothing of what, what it was made out of. Mm -mm. But my hypothesis would be the fact that that was what was, that experimental drive is probably what poisoned the atmosphere. So yeah, it would be interesting if we could find it. Ugh. Or any information about it. All right. So the other area was the caves underground. Cool. Um, and then the other places were all basically swarms or hives of this. I believe I believe that was ascertained. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was more talking out loud. Than... <laughs> no problem. All right. Um... Yeah, that hive is underground. We're going to run into more of these creatures, guaranteed. Yeah, I'm assuming too, but... If we can get any samples from them, by chance... Oh, I would love to, I would love to catch one. That would be... That would be lovely. <laughs> We didn't bring a specimen cage. Sorry, we can sir. get a piece of it. We or didn't bring. A... I don't. We we could make pieces of them, but I have a giant my... glass. We can catch. <laughs> we did not bring a specimen cage, but we did bring a chief engineer. What is the what's the possibility of rigging a force field? Start pondering the question. What? Don't... How... Yeah. Prime directive. You don't know if this is a culture yet or anything like that. They, they were organized. I don't, don't necessarily. Know. I did not necessarily mean to contain then commander more so right. to protect us as we move through the environment. <laughs> and I'm all for that. Again, excellent security instincts. Have you thought about a transfer? I whisper over to her, I'm with you. I want to take one back and see what it takes. <laughs> uh, you'd have fun in my lab. I got pieces of everything. <laughs> uh, uh. Okay, let's make our way back to the shuttle. Okay. Quietly. <laughs> okay, uh, so this is. So making your way back to the shuttle is. Um, now that you've added the stealth option to it, 
you have now used up uh, one hour and 15 minutes worth of your suit's containment. <clears throat> so, let's uh, let's see. So, um, one of you, um, could you please roll me a uh, fitness plus security? And this is going to... Actually, you know what? Let's make this an extended task because it sounds like fun. Um, so, this is going to make your way back to the shuttle or wherever the heck you're going next and avoid the bugs. Uh, let's see. So, this is going to be a work track uh, 15. This is going to be a difficulty of four to start with because it's a dark ship. Good luck with that. Uh, let's see. There is going to be a resistance of three. <clears throat> and actually, I'm going to make the resistance four because you have a lot of momentum. And I will say that there's a magnitude of three to this task. Uh, so fitness security would be would be the obvious one. Um, but if you want to roll stuff like Insight Medicine to determine and potentially evade bugs, that would work too. Um, reason Engineering to discern and figure out alternative paths, that sort of stuff. All right. I, would, I have to be the person to ask, mm -hmm. what about remote beaming out? Can uh, we just calm, can the and calm the shuttle systems and see if we could set up a computer remote transport? Well, you certainly could. Uh, the amount of problems with the surrounding radiation will prove problematic, but you're welcome to try. Well, the shuttle isn't too far away. That from, is true. Um, it's far enough. We're not too far away from the shuttle. That is true. We have pattern enhancers. You do. Where'd you leave them? Or did you bring them with you? The shuttle. <laughs> oh, they're on my back. Ah. Okay. Well, you can deploy really them. Never come without them. If you'd like to deploy them and bypass the test, that works for me. Works. Okay. okay. So we are... Now, the shuttle only has two pads, so you're going to have to beam out in pairs. Uh, so you guys are going to... Honor and I will be the last ones out then. Uh, okay. I think we should uh, make a risk assessment check before we actually make that. Or would we rather trek through back this, through the ship or do we want to try to beam out i suppose it's, that's whichever method is going to be safer <coughs> well, that's the commander's decision i would think yeah i would like i said i think we should just make our way back and save our all right <sighs> i like to say that. i think i want to hit the extended task and try to make our way back quietly and securely okay. i mean we already kind of said that that was the original I do like your idea, but I'd rather get there and keep our enhancers. Okay. Okay. Uh, so then, rather than me just saying it takes you X minutes, I will say that each roll will represent 10 minutes, uh, or each attempt at the task will be 10 minutes. Okay. I want to go first with fitness and command. Just wondering, but is it. Would I have enough? Would it be faster, and would it be doing quietly enough for me to actually try to jury rig one of the turbo lifts to save time and take that instead of going through all the Jeffrey's tubes? That would be in. No, you have the battery. You could. You could certainly try to jury rig it. It would only work for a scene, and. Yeah. But yeah, that's a possibility. That'd okay. Be a lot of noise. That would be. Okay, maybe we'll save that for the very end or something. Yeah. Okay. So, Can you assist? Yeah. <clears throat> Don't even think anyone could actually assist with that and get make oh, the task. Have... Unless Bashir wishes to spend his determination and re-roll. Not yet. Okay. So, okay. So that is one task. That is ten minutes. Uh, who wishes to roll next? Um, Colton would do it with fitness security. Sure. And infiltration as well. And I should say that one person can assist with each test. And can have an R assist. You mm -hmm. cut the same same thing. Sure. And I'll t tell you this. Let's go ahead and have an R do the task. He'll pop his determination of protect the pride. 
that works. And that's for an, the third dice that automatically crits, right? Uh, correct. Okay. Well, the first dice that automatically yeah, yeah. crits. Yeah. So fitness, security. And who wants to assist? Uh, I'll go ahead and assist. Okay. Oh, you're rolling both of them? Uh, yeah, I just did. Who's it's? Okay. okay. So Hanara makes the test. Myself. Let's only do one. I'm sorry. And we'll just count the first dice rolled, so that will do the trick. Okay. Oh, I haven't rolled yet. I am. Sure go. No assist, but at least you did it. So please roll me six challenge dice. And then... Okay, so that is five. Uh, however, there's a res resistance of four. So that's... Let's go ahead. Use momentum to... Reroll the zeros in the one. Why is that? Oh, is it crit? Why is it in red? Uh, that's just how dice. That's just how the macros okay. work within roll twenty. If you roll a one on the dice, it just normally highlights as a one. Don't okay, worry got about it. it. So I'll just reroll three then. Okay, so that is uh, seven successes. And with uh, eight. Or eight, right? Eight, my bad, can't count. Eight, so that has that. knocked four off the work track. But that's not enough for breakthrough. <clears throat> Can we do another momentum to get rid of resistance? You certainly could. Uh, that'll knock resistance Let's down by do two. So instead, that's seven. And that will give us good. Yeah. And that should give us the breakthrough. That does indeed give you a breakthrough. So. Let me... So that would have been two momentum used as well, yep. total. Okay. So that instead knocks the work track down to nine. Difficulty is now three. Magnitude of the task is now two. <clears throat> so uh, on your way up, you took the time to properly map out the corridors, not just relying on the standardized um, map of the Excelsior class that was made available from your ship. And be, with your help, you are able to find quicker ways down through some of the cost, uh, corroded holes. And um, let's say, now it's always easier to go down than up in a ship like this. Okay, uh, who wants to take the next task? I'm not hearing a lot what of What would volume. the next one be? A uh, similar thing. It could be insight medicine to see where they're coming from. Um, reason engineering to find new pathways down. Or another uh, fitness security for a stealth roll. I'll go with the insight medicine. Okay. I, can I use sensors as a focus? I would allow sensors, yes. And I'm going to dump some threat to increase oh. the complication range uh, 17 to 20. And okay. can anybody assist? <laughs> One person can assist, certainly. Even if they've already assisted? I believe they can, yeah. Okay. Helsing can do it with fit of security again. Works for me. Okay, that did the trick. So that is the three successes you need. Yeah, you're as you, you get uh, dangerously close to sick bay, and your uh, vids, your your tricorder reads a small cluster of the bugs uh, cl clustered around sick bay, and it's a quick uh, hand signal, and you redirect the group down an alternate pathway that Liam found. Uh, if if you can please roll me six challenge dice, surveyed. Okay. 
Nice roll. Yay! Okay, so that's with a resistance of four. Uh, that's currently force uh, off the work track. Uh, you can spend momentum to knock the resistance down if you'd like, or we could just take the four. Should we use the momentum or save the momentum? See, we got four resistance still. Yeah. So if you use one momentum to burn the resistance, we should get a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would be a yes. Yes. So, <laughs> okay. We shall do that. Okay. So we're now looking at... Uh, so that's six work done. So we're down to a work track of three. Difficulty of two. Magnitude of one. So you have made it down to deflector control. Um, sadly, the shuttle's launch has attracted several bugs between you and the shuttle. Uh, so that's currently... So you can either stealth past them, shoot them, or do other things. Um, the caustic winds are now blowing... Uh, have now increased and are fairly... Thankfully, because of you are in your environmental suits, all you hear is sort of the wind buffeting against the helmet, but it would be pretty deafening if you're exposed to it. And uh, over that, we can still hear the bugs chittering? Yeah, the bugs in the shuttle are chittering a bit. There's uh, ten life signs. I guess there's no way to use it. Engineering at this point to find another path, right? It's pretty. It's like a pretty straight shot. Pretty much um, between you and the shuttle. Right, um, okay. However, an engineering test could be figured out to see if there's a way to, say, distract the bugs. Yeah, that, that's like what that. I was thinking. Could we rig a hand phaser or a tricorder to make that same high pitch scream that they were doing before when they got alerted and throw it the opposite direction? I mean, jury rig is exactly my specialty. Mm, yes. Yeah, that's what I remember. All right. Okay, so... And because you have jury rig, that knocks the difficulty down, what, one? Two? Uh, Knocks it down by two. Nice. That's perfect. Right, I assume it's daring engineering? Daring engineering, difficulty zero. You obviously succeed, and you get two momentum. All right. Uh, so you can roll me seven challenge dice, please. Uh, let's see. So that is not quite enough with the resistance, but, you know, spend one of those momentum, and you knock it down. All right, I'll spend a momentum. Yeah. Cool. Okay. The work track's completed. You have a tricorder sonic bomb, or tricorder noisemaker, however you wish to flavor it. Noisemaker. No bomb. No bomb. It's a, it's a, uh, the one of those party, yeah, party favors. Sure. Those, uh, those, those, yeah. All right. What do you wish to do with it? Uh, I guess it's. Well, if the sound is the sound emanating from it, I'm just trying to think yeah. if it's a thrown thing. Oh yeah, this would definitely be a thrown thing. Okay, so I'll I will program it, set it on a um, on a short short timer, and I'll I'll um, turn around with the, let the uh, team know, and I'll start counting down, and then once everyone's about, about ready, I'll, I'll toss it over and uh, have a start aim to have it shriek as we start running. Fun. Okay. There is a brief pause as uh, Thishran throws the uh, noisemaker away from the shuttlecraft. There is... Before... Um, bef you don't hear it because your ears are muffled thanks to your EVA suits, but the bugs certainly do, and the bugs will chitter at one another briefly, and then they will sc scutter off to the source of the noise. You, you figure you'd have about 45 seconds to bolt back to the shuttle. Go, 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 go. Haha. It is a well fast... Done. It's a fast sprint, but here you are. Safe and sound aboard a shuttle. Up, up, up. And let's just hope these things don't fly. 
So oh, you that's are... a nice invigorating adventure, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So you are all safe in the shuttle. I uh, let's take a quick bio break. Uh, we'll be back here at say twenty-five ish past the hour. Uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do next. So I will put the stream on countdown, and we will be back shortly. All right. And the Nighthawks computer saying. And tonight's movie is Starship Troopers. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, All right, and we are.
Okay, and we're back. It finds the away team safe inside the shuttlecraft as a small swarm of largish insects are scampering about outside. What do you guys wish to do now? I'd like to use the transporter and focus it on the life signs of bugs and transport it into a containment cell. Okay. Prime directive. Bugs. Okay. Samples. Insectoid life. Okay, Don't so you're rigging a... Def define the containment cell. Um, well, I'm sure we can generate one. Uh, large Pattern enough buffer. just to... Ooh, that's an interesting idea. Till I can get it back to the ship. The Shran, can we do that? Can I save the pattern? Can I? Can we save the pattern of one of these creatures until we get back to the ship? Personally, well, that seems ethically more compromising than just actually keeping them in a containment cell. <laughs> Not like we're erasing the memory or anything. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. Oh boy. All right. Why don't I, why don't I see if it's technically feasible, and then we can we can figure out the the moral quandary of that. All right. So this is a scene change. So you lose one momentum. And if you could roll me a reason plus engineering, please. This will be a difficulty of one. Um, Zeno psychology? Uh, if you had, like, transporter systems, that would work better. Okay, no. Okay. Never mind then. I can assist with xenobiology. That would have been a good one, I think. <laughs> so that's one momentum back. Um, Thishran, everyone has heard the story of our uh, um, en Chief Engineer Montgomery Scott held himself in a transporter buffer for, I think it was 25, 30-ish, probably longer than that, years, maybe 50 years on board a civilian uh, transport ship. So if he can do that, then it's easy enough for you to do a uh, bug in a shuttle's transporter buffer for a few hours. Okay. Well, Commander, uh, yeah, no, no problem. I mean, if you want me to do it, it's a piece of pie. Please. All right. I'll get on it. Oh. Please tell me you're used jury rig. <laughs> hmm. Ooh, actually, that's a good question. What are your values? Let's find out. Uh, I mean, it is better to be fast than perfect. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's lots of bugs out there. You could, any one of them will do. So I will give you a determination if you tag the, it's better fast than perfect. And dry rig it? Yeah. All right. I mean, yeah. Huh. What's the worst I can have? All right. All right. <laughs> Okay, so it was uh, going to be difficulty two. Now it's difficulty zero. All right, for reason engineering again? Or... Uh, control engineering. Control engineering. That does the trick. So two more momentum for you. And... Yeah, you, yeah, you yank right. out a couple of the safety buffers and... All right, Commander, whipped up something quick. Uh, can't say it's going to last for very long, but hopefully it doesn't need to. Thank you. Appreciate it. Lieutenant, you now have your sample. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So you now, cur uh, it doesn't matter. You pick one bug at random, and it is now in the transporter beam. And it's the queen. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, you'd may that would be noticeable. Uh, so now, the, you, because it's in the transporter buffer, only one pad is now a working. Only one pad is now working on the shuttle. All right. So, um, we know they dropped the core somewhere um, on this planet. Is there any way? Like, we could search for Starfleet technology 
on this barren like wasteland. Okay. Uh, that is certainly doable because you have a shuttle and you have sensors. And so and as long as you are inside said shuttle, your suits aren't going to decay any further. Um, so it won't take too long. Only a couple of after a couple of flybys around the planet, uh, you find a it would be about half the size of the uh, runabout that you're in right now. Um, it would measure probably 10 feet or 10, let's see, 5 meters cubed, I would say. So about uh, 15 feet cubed. Definitely Starfleet technology. Um, the, it definitely looks like a reactor of some sort. And it, your shuttle literally says that it, uh, due to safety reasons, the shuttle cannot approach within uh, 100 meters due to uh, radiation effects. Can we identify what type of radiation, even though we can probably guess? That would be, right. Yeah. Um, easy enough. Um, <laughs> it is obviously polonium. I believe the isotope is 210, one of the most radioactive substances that is occurring. All right. Can we get a good scan uh, inside of this? Uh, insight plus engineering um, and insight science can assist. Um, the ship? Uh, ship can also assist with uh, sensors plus engineering or science, whichever one you like. And this is going to be a difficulty of four just due to the amount of radiation. And just because I think it's fun, I will add uh, spend some threat to bump difficulty to 18 to 20. So I'll do insight plus engineering. I'll spend momentum. I will assist it. Okay. Insight science. Okay. So that's the four you need. Let's see what the Bashir gets. The Bashir. Ooh, and that <coughs> I believe maxes your momentum out at six. Okay, so. I wrote this down because I knew I would forget when the moment arose. Because I'm starting to become a better GM. <clears throat> so, um, Thashran, you or you at least recognize the theory of this device. Um, ever, and because I think it provides good insight. Uh, so everyone knows of the failure of the public failure of the USS Excelsior's transwarp drive. Um, that Starfleet brought it out to brag that it would sur uh, surpass uh, USS Enterprise NCC 1701's speed records, and when the time came, it backfired like an old jalopy. Now that wasn't the end of the experiments, but um, that was the most public one, and even if, or as Starfleet continued to run the experiments, they realized that the engine looked good on paper, but it just would not work. So they attempted other form. So they publicly recommissioned the USS Excelsior to an exploration ship, and quietly seconded a second Excelsior class, the USS Veritas, um, to pursue other forms of. Uh, faster than light travel. One was known as a coaxial warp drive. Um, coaxial warp drives um, function by taking particles and reconfiguring their matrices, more or less, to jump from one, sp one point of the universe to another, similarly to folding space. Technology wasn't quite there yet, uh, but they were able to at least figure out an idea to boost engine efficiency by um, basically using a uh, an onboard nuclear reactor, which is more standard in the 24th, 23rd century than people care to admit, uh, to create bismuth-210 and then pound it to smithereens to create polonium. And then harness the polonium radiation 
in the matter-antimatter equation to basically act like a nitrous boost to warp. And that is what this engine does, is it takes matter, breaks it down like a replicator, rebuilds the matter to be bismuth-210, and then pummels the heck out of it in to make polonium-210. Problem is, it's kind of missing the other part of the engine that is supposed to process the polonium-210. Huh. Well, I could see no possible way that could have ever gone wrong. Uh, all right. Well, I'll relate to the rest of the crew. So it's something pretty, pretty experimental. That gives me some interesting ideas for our own warp drive. <laughs> I think oh. everyone else should be worried at that point. That's why everyone is speechless. <laughs> Yeah. You can't see me shake inside my suit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of passing this info along as I, and you see me start clearly pausing and thinking about that. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Very slowly turns her head. <laughs> Puts her helmets back on. <laughs> Requests a transfer. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, so what now, Commander? Well, can we do another one more scan? Can we buy any, any life signs that's not bug? <laughs> At this point, the shuttle's passives were active long enough that the life signs beneath the vulc or belief inside the caves were humanoid. They are. They are. Cohabitating, you know, as in like <laughs> living <laughs> amongst them peacefully. If you spend a momentum, I'll answer that question. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. <laughs> uh, so no, they're they are not cohabitating peacefully. In fact, the life sign, the bug life signs, are all over the Excelsior, and no bug life signs are inside the caves. Uh, we misread that situation. <laughs> okay. Let's hit back to the caves. <laughs> okay. You are back at the area where you once were. <clears throat> and so... Uh, now that you've had enough time at this area, the shuttle scans indicate that there is, while there is no power to the USS Veritas, there is apparently power, or at least a small generator, feeding what appears to be a force field um, underneath the ship. And that, that force field appears to lead, or that appears to be the only one way in or out of the cave system. Can, have you, what about we try hailing them, sir? That's what I was just going to say. Uh, can we try like a uh, Federation frequency and try, try to contact them? You can certainly try. I want to try. Okay. Um, what do you wish to say over said frequencies? Greetings, this is Nighthawk Shuttle, uh, the Phantom. Uh, is there anybody out there? Okay. Um, if you could please roll me. Actually, no, I had you roll enough because you have enough momentum. There is a period of time where you, there's that awkward silence of roughly 10 to 12 seconds where no one says anything. And just as you're going to push the button to try again, there's a old-fashioned squawk on the radio as the frequencies align. You hear, hello, hello, is there actually someone out there? Greetings. 
I am Commander Bashir of the Night Hawk. Holy shit, you're actually... There's people. You're, that's Federation, right? Standard? Yes. Holy crap. I won the bet. <laughs> I won the bet. May I ask who I'm speaking with? Oh, sorry, sorry, yes. My, my name's Bryn. And... Uh, uh, sorry, you are... You're real, right? This isn't a psychosis? No. Oh, good. Oh, I thought Dean was playing with me again. Okay, so, yes. Um, yeah, so you probably have a lot of questions. Um, wish I could answer them. Um, probably could, but probably better to do it in person. Um, can you fight your way through the bugs and make your way down? Um, yeah, the entrance is in the shuttle bay. There's probably a few of the damn things around. I'll see if I can't get the guards to at least clear a path for you, maybe. Um, this is exciting. Like, wow, if if I knew you were coming, I'd save you a beer. But <laughs> we ran out of beer 80 years ago. <laughs> what can you tell us about the bugs? Well, years I can tell are... I don't know. That's not my department. I just was just told to man to keep in watch on this communication system. It was my turn. Everybody does it for at least one day of at least one day for every few months. It's just my turn. I what I just go. How many survivors are there? <sighs> There's 70ish. I'm I'm sorry, Vid, you were going to ask a question? What have y'all been eating? <laughs> People. Barbecued bug. Bugs. <laughs> no, I'm, she says people. I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Mostly fungus. Uh, vitamin supplements from the replicator that was salvaged. Some of the bugs, they don't taste too bad with a decent amount of uh, salt. <sighs> Soylent green is Vulcan. <laughs> Soylent green is Vulcan. If we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> Yes, why don't you see if your security can clear a path for us and we will dock as soon as possible. You got it, you got it. Um, yes, uh, sorry, what was your name? Bashir, Commander Bashir. Cool! Oh. As she leaves the mic open, as you can hear her literally running away, yelling, there's people out there, there's people out there. Everybody, gather up, gather up. And... There, she just leaves the calm line open. <laughs> All right, Miss Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what next? Oh, wait. Actually, we keep saying it wrong. Don't Vulcan women go by Mr.? <laughs> I think that will lead to a um, inconvenient ne neck pinch at the wrong time. <laughs> Well, I thought that it was like Sarek, or not Sarek, uh, the one that Spock ended up marrying was like always called him. She, He called her Mr. I, I don't know. Don't I'm, remember I, in the least. Okay, fair enough. <clears throat> All right, we're going in. Okay. <clears throat> and how are you going in? Are you going to try to reposition into the shuttle bay or are you going to make your way to it? I was going to see if we could go into the shuttle bay. As in take the ship? Yeah. Okay. So the shuttle bay is locked down. Uh, the bay door was closed. Actually, no, because the executive shuttles had to leave somehow. The bay door is... Basically looks like it was cut off its hinges and pushed to the ground where it... What remains of it is a corroded, rusted mess. Uh, taking the shuttle in is actually a pretty straightforward thing. Uh, the problem is, is between you and the entranceway, there will be bugs. Okay. So, you guys are here. The shuttle is hiding. There is the shuttlecraft.
shuttlecraft comes in back here uh, the entrance is this uh, gray square in the leftish corner and uh, you uh, the shuttle is quick to see that it has been cut open long time ago and there is a force field on it okay and between you How and many it are... are bugs. <clears throat> okay, where's the force field? I mean, um, so, ping where the force field's at. Yeah. Uh, let me draw a box, because I think I can do that oh, in 20. You, you are trying to get to this red box. Okay. And... For the moment, <laughs> I am just going to treat this as combat, unless you tell me otherwise. Miss Jackson, fire face. Man, that's a good idea. Uh, so, um, okay, so if Miss Jackson wants to fire phasers, that's going to be control security from her. They're not using the shuttle bay anyway. It doesn't matter if we do some damage. Exactly. <laughs> the planet's done a decent amount. Exactly. Yeah. Might as well it that'll, that'll clear some room, too. Just like, taking a couple pot shots. And just because you're using a ship-based weaponry to target um, personnel and in not considering damage, um, if you spend oh. two momentum to gain the advantage, I'll lower the difficulty. Healthy will take the weapon station. Ah. Okay, so whichever one of you wishes to fire will be control security, and the shuttle will assist with weapons security. I couldn't use con for this. Ah, uh, no, not for fire. For the weapons. assist. Um. It'll either be the shuttle assisting or Jackson assisting, and if Jackson assists, it would be con. Okay. And I'll take a. Yeah, and I'll take a momentum. Okay. And there's your two well, successes. <clears throat> okay, there is the third. So that's that momentum right back. Um, as much. Yeah, tell you what, let's roll some challenge dice just to see what you do. Um, however many challenge dice the shuttle typically rolls, add two more. Add two more. And I'm. You want to take those, Cap? Uh, we're firing phases, correct? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So it'd be yeah. four. It'd be six. With two more, would be six. Check. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Okay, I'll go ahead and roll this. Okay. Okay. Momentum reroll zero. If you want. Okay, you're down to four momentum. I'm going to reroll the three. Sure. Okay, that is five total. And that is enough. One, two, three four five the shuttle um the phasers lance out in quick succession knocking down five of the bugs one of which hides behind a pillar and avoids the attack however it's quickly blasted from a phaser beam coming from underneath the red area there is an individual oh, that's not the right individual uh, there is this individual sticks his head up from the uh, red area makes a jubilant wave and motions everyone to come in quickly um, because of the noise you made uh, you guys are beginning to hear distant screams of more insects coming through the ship's hull We want to leave Jackson and myself or Hernarin 
the shuttle to keep the phasers hot. <coughs> well, I am a little concerned about the ship, but <laughs> it's going to be a rough time getting back to it. Uh, grab the uh, um, enhancers, and we'll all make a break for it. Roger. Okay. And I, just the for, shuttle uh, happen to have what? I was going to volunteer oh, yeah. that the shuttle could have a weapons locker if you feel the need to take heavier armaments. That's what I was going to ask. Nice. I get more threat because of it, but I don't mind. Pulse grenades? You're such a giver. Are pulse grenades a thing in this? Oh, Runners. yes. Then, yes, there are a limited number of pulse grenades. Let's say one per Opportunity turn. one. Opportunity one, escalation two. Works for me. That's enough to give each one of you a pulse grenade. And do we want phaser threes? I'd say so, but that's up to... Sure. As you say, I think I'm good, but uh, the security can definitely take the phaser threes. Well, just ask them, so that gives them more threat. I said we're probably gonna we're gonna have to fight our way out of here anyway. <laughs> Roger that. So, um, Hanara and Helsing will have Phaser threes as well. Anybody okay. else? Because we pay it one time. Yeah. I'll grab one. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Ready. Did we specify exactly who's leading, leading the shuttle? We all are, or or is? I figured we might as well. Okay. Okay. So no one is left on the shuttle. Okay. I'll make a note of that. Uh, the individual with a hat and slightly surly expression is is wielding one of those very old style uh, Type Two phasers that look like a pistol as he just shouts, if you girls are done dressing up, get out here, please. <laughs> On the way out. Right. Yeah. As you get closer you re um, and you get a better view of him, uh, you realize that his skin is... Um, uh, it bears uh, light chemical burns over most of his body. Um he has a, instead of a proper EVA suit, he has a tight, or he's wearing something similar in style to like scuba goggles uh, to form a airtight seal around his face or his uh, eyes. And he's breathing through a respirator in between breaths. He, uh, as, each of, as the last of you duck bet underneath the force field, uh, he's the last one to get in. Uh, he reactivates the force field. Uh, as you step into an airlock style uh, entryway, there's a small red indicator that goes green. After about 30 seconds, you feel the whoosh of fresh, if somewhat stale, or clean, if somewhat stale air wash over you. Well, he does. You don't. You're in suits. And he takes off his eye, his goggles, and his tank, and say, "Oh, that's better. Man, must be nice having one of those. Haven't seen one of those in quite a long time. Come, come, let me, let me bring you down. Name's Dean. Which one of y'all is the leader? That would be me, Commander Bashir. Ah, and ah, and Orions. Ah." Love the Andorians myself. Good, good folk, hardy workers. Wish we had some of them with us. Oh well, now he's with a bit of an exasperated, sort of a throaty gurgle, uh, trying as if using um, damaged vocal cords. <clears throat> he leads you down through a series of tunnels that are some natural, and you do see evidence of boring as if they were using phasers to make the tunnels. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I was like, evidence of boring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, boring like Elon Musk. Right, yeah. Uh, it was yeah. just like there's a couch and a TV, and they're playing I mean, I, runs. I, and... I could easily fix instances of boring. <laughs> <laughs> I pr- I brought a disco ball just for this occasion. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty sure he's actually wired his helmet to display disco lights if needed. In case of emergency. Absolutely. You know, I, yeah. you know, I, I sure wasn't expecting anyone at, after this long. I, I thought Bryn was just pulling her leg after I got her a few weeks back with, you know, a, with a roach part under her pillow. <laughs> uh, girl can't take it. So who's in charge here? Why, you're looking at him. He looks you dead in the eye before holding it for three seconds and then doubling over laughing. Ha! 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 Gotcha! Nah, it's old Casaval. That was uh, Nasaka's boy. He's a bit of a surly guy, but... Eh, got... This planet don't leave a lot for uh, friendliness, you, you know? I see. Now, and you descend a... A uh, slow corkscrew style pattern down uh, past a couple other um, disgrun or uh, burly folks with uh, phaser rifles and uh, bashed together melee weapons, and all of a sudden you come down to here. They tried calling this place Nasaka Town after it began after we first started. D- after we decided that we had to live here. Quite frankly, most of us call it the hole. Some of them call it shit town. But, eh, he shrugs. It's what I've known. Is, is there a giant crystal like that? Uh, there is. And if someone wishes to actually, you know, figure out why it's a giant crystal doing that, they're more than welcome to figure it out. Science officer. Yes. Hey, <laughs> oh. Dean, what does the crystal do? Gives us light, of course. He looks at you as if you're daft. You know, you can take those Nothing helmets else. off. You got air down here. Is it just light, though? Well, I that's... mean, it's only one one type of light. It doesn't like change between different colors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is going to be an insight science. Uh, insight? Yeah, insight science from the science officer. Uh, difficulty of one. She's going to find out if it changes colors. Oh, well. Did I? That's it. Uh, you get one momentum out of the deal. Cool. So what you find is um, there is a f- pair of, or stretched up, da ah, sorry, let me start again. From the cavern that you were walking down, there were a pair of heavy reinforced power conduits that were um, stretching down from one of the um, exposed circuits on the uh, Veritas. Uh, the power, sir, one of the cables heads deeper into the town while the other one plugs itself into this crystal. Uh, the crystal itself seems to be a, a natural sort of it's not a diamond per se uh, more of a da, more of a quartz type crystal either way it's enough to diffuse light uh, to the uh, to illuminate the pit and yes that's all it does is emanate light how much gold press Latin is it worth? No. You're not no. referring. Power. <laughs> um, you are quickly met. Uh, as Dean brings you down, there is a female um, wearing a very shabby, um, worn out, patched up movies era uh, Star Trek uniform. Um, she literally runs up to the 
uh, to the first person she sees, which would be uh, Bashir, gives you a big hug and grins. And then she realizes what she's hugging. Goes, uh, 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 what's he cu- uh, That's radiate. Am I going to die? Like, this thing's covered in suit. <coughs> At which point Dean goes, nah. That's the, that's the airlock, sweetie. You'll be fine. Bring looks at him and goes, you sure? Dean just shrugs and goes, well, we all have got to die sometime, don't we, sweetie? And he turns, wanders away for a few minutes, leaving Bryn there speechless as a crowd begins to form behind her. Uh, the crowd itself is mixed, uh, mixed species, primarily human and Vulcan. Uh, you see a few other of the um, me- of the uh, early Federation member races, a couple Denobulans, a uh, Tellarite, and several children. Uh, several, uh, actually, they've been here what 100-ish years. Yeah, so there's ch- ev- there are people all the way from young babies all the way into their late 60s and into their seniors. Now is the science. Um, I can't remember the name, but the one that we got the... Nasaka? Uh, yeah. No, uh, she is not present. Um, um, I'm going to ask about her. Okay. Uh, one second while the GM tries to multitask and fails miserably at it. This gentleman. She died. <coughs> 50 year, she died about 50 years ago. Out walks a Vulcan male. His uniform, uh, compared to the rest, is as mint a condition as possible. Uh, he extends his arm and to shake the Andorians. I'm Kaval. I'm her son. Ah, I am sorry for your loss. She lived a I... she lived a full life and saw to the colony's early days. If not for her, we would probably have all have died. We found a shuttlecraft with her beacon. Is what brought us here. He nods stoically. That is most fortuitous. I have many questions, and I am certain you have many yourself. What is the uh, evacuation kit? capacity of your vessel we have a shuttlecraft currently we have a starship above but before we start making any plans i think we need to have a conversation and i'll have to talk to my captain understandable we will should be able to we have minimal power to spare to communications however if we dim if we redirect the power from the light source, and he gestures to the crystal above, we should have enough power to boost communications uh, to your ship in orbit. Okay. Um, if you don't mind us phoning home, we can definitely have a sit down. Of course not. Tell me, how long has the Federation been operating in this area? Not long. Um, we are an exploratory vessel charting this area. Then it is most fortuitous that we were able to cross paths. It is. Okay. Uh, Captain Sengral, you are on the bridge of your ship. When... Uh, you get two reports almost simultaneously. The first being that the transport hopscotch team is, or that the transport, ah, sorry, let me start again. The first is that the transport network appears to be operational and has linked to the shuttle. Uh, there appears to be something held in w- one of the shuttle's buffers. Um, the second is that you are receiving a hail from the planet's surface. Well, can we identify exactly what's within the buffer? 
Uh, difficult to say, sir. I'll have to run it through some... I'm unable to now analyze it with the local computer, sir. All I have is that there is a signal waiting to be tra uh, waiting in storage. That is all that the shuttle can give me at the moment. It's not a member of the away team, is it? I would be. I'm uncertain, sir. Well, make sure you can uh, determine exactly what exactly is in the buffer before you transport that. <laughs> Uh, since we can't necessarily get any identifications, please make a note when you've made a determination. Understood, sir. In any case, open a channel to the planet below. The, <coughs> the communications array is a basic compared to what you're used to of the uh, sh on the ship, of course. Heck, it's basic even compared to what was available in the uh, 23rd century. But it's working and it has established a patchy connection to the ship. Kaval just sta stands away from the chair and gestures that um, Bashir, you sit down. All right. I'll sit down. Captain to... Uh, <laughs> Commander Bashir to... Nighthawk? We're receiving you. What's the status of, of the away team? Uh, we're all safe and sound. We have encountered a strange insectoid creatures that have taken over the wreckage of the ship. Um, and we just found about 80 survivors from the uh, not Saratoga. Veritas. Veritas, thank you. Ugh. Can you repeat that? Your last transmission. You did say eight you found survivors? Eighty. They said seventy to eighty. Women, children. There's Yes, Captain. <laughs> survivors. Well, I'll go ahead and calm six bay and probably prepare for a potential, you know, a, med a medical emergency, uh, just to, in case any of them require medical assistance. Um, I think a lot of them will. Uh, a lot of radiation we've seen. Um, but, yeah, they would like a ride out of here. <laughs> I can imagine so. What is exactly is within the shuttle's transporter buffer? We got the network up and running, but we're quite unsure exactly what this is. It's not a member of the away team, is it? No, sir. It is a one of the insectoid creatures uh, that are thriving on this planet. <laughs> I'm having flashbacks in my mind of Bashir doing less than reputable things again. <laughs> <laughs> so commander would you prefer to explain to me exactly why there is a member of this species within the shuttle's transport buffer i would like to get to find out more about the creatures uh so it's about this time that um uh ensign vault Rani says uh sorry to interrupt captain uh commander the buffer, the shuttle's buffer reports that it is no longer holding any s subject. Is there anybody else on board the shuttle? No, sir. We're all we're all inside their compound. Well, <laughs> can we? Uh, let's erect a force field within the shuttle, just to make sure no other key systems could potentially be damaged by whatever this is. We'll go check it out, sir. In any case, I have no idea exactly how we're supposed to evacuate these 80 people, especially with the potentially whatever the situation the Sunnocraft is in now. Do you require any additional personnel? Well, we could probably send some more shuttles down and because we can't transport. Captain. So we'll have to send. Uh, my apologies for intruding. My name is Kaval, and I am the de facto representative of the of a Nasaka's town 
we ha before sh she sadly perished, my mother was working on a plan to jury rig the Veritas's transporter array that would be able to uh, assuming we could hook the assuming the generator was or the experimental generator was still around and salvageable we could hook it back up to the ship and get enough power to re allow for the confinement beam to capture all of our patterns as I'm listening to this I'm like sure and does this seem feasible to you um all right do i know if it is feasible in fact um that would that would be a insight engineering test difficulty one well that's one more momentum right. uh Thetran, it sounds feasible um, if all these systems were in any decent working order uh, thankfully the Excel the Veritas's transporter room was not exposed to the elements and so should be in decent shape problem is it needs power and there's bugs but it's doable you think all right yeah, yeah, Commander, I, I could do that. I mean, we solve the problem with power and uh, clear the evict the bugs out of the room, and uh, I'm good to go. I could probably figure it out. Is there any way the Nighthawk can assist in a more proactive way? I mean, you guys have been on the surface of this planet longer than, you know, us discovering it. If we descended into the atmosphere, would we encounter any difficulties that uh, the Veritas did? I am curious about... Uh, that would be a question to either Jefferson Davis or Miss Jackson. And as you guys already have a heck of a lot of momentum, I will just say that... Uh, that uh, Miss Jackson, you had a bit of a tr tough time in doing things with the shuttle, but it was a much smaller ship. A larger ship, such as the uh, Night Nighthawk, should be able to survive in the atmosphere for an indefinite amount of time. Well, in any case, Kaval, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, at least with the situation that it appears to me right now, I'm a little bit hesitant of doing a mass transport until your systems are operational. In any case, we'll go ahead and continue to discuss the potential of uh, the evacuation plans. If there's anything else that you require from us, uh, I'm really sure that we'll probably be able to send it down or assist you in some way. But in any case, it seems like you guys have a shuttle that you need to tend to. Understood. If there's any other medical assistance that you require, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you, Captain. We'll uh, contact you as soon as we know more. And because it's after 9 o'clock, and we still have the whole evacuation stuff to deal with, I think we're going to turn this into a two-parter, folks. Uh, so, I'd like to say thank you all for playing, and I look forward to seeing how things could go catastrophically well next session. <laughs> so, I will... So we will be back on Thursday, uh, f February the 27th. So thanks all for listening. Thank you all for playing. And I will s we will see you guys next time. Goodbye.